Hello people, in this video we want to look at episiotomy. <clears throat> Basically it is also called as perineotomy. Episio actually refers to vulva or perineum and tomy means a cut. So that is why this word episiotomy. Like this you have so many other kind of uh, things that you do on the vulva or perineum. You have episio, raphi, etc. Okay, so tomy is only the uh, part that is suffixed, is it? Yeah. So basically what you can see here is, this is the baby's head, so it's crowning, this is the vaginal opening, this is the anus, so you should notice the cuts here, this is a cut and this is a cut, either one of them you do, don't do both. So basically this is a medial episiotomy and this is a medial lateral episiotomy, which will be lateral. If this is medial, this is lateral, right? This also can be lateral. This also can be medial. But this they don't do obviously because there you have your other parts of your external genitalia, right? The urethral opening is here, isn't it? So basically where will you do? You will do either here. Medially means they refer to this one, not the top one. Okay, medially. Laterally they don't do. Medial laterally. Okay. Why do they don't do laterally? Because they can injure the Bartholin gland openings or something. Okay, that's why they don't do the lateral. So, let's look at the definition. A surgically, what is episiotomy? It is a surgically planned incision on the perineum and the posterior vaginal wall. So, it's an incision on the perineum and the posterior vaginal wall during the second stage of labor. When do you do it? During the second stage of labor. This is also an important word. This is called as episiotomy or perineotomy. This is in fact an inflicted second degree perineal injury. What type of injury is it? It is a second degree perineal injury, second degree. So you should know the degrees of injuries. So it's not a very nice one, isn't it? It's quite a deep one looks like, second degree. So even in burns you have this first degree, second degree, third degree, isn't it? So basically in second degree of uh, injury, what will be there? The outer layer, the skin, etc. and the layer underneath also will be affected. Third degree, even more deep. I think fourth degree is where the muscle, etc. are affected. Anyways, that's in burns. Now what are the objectives? Okay, there's one more line here. It's the most common obstetric operation performed. Okay, so you have to remember this is the most common obstetric what? Operation. Okay, here what is this photo? Basically they are doing a mediolateral they're taking the scissors, it's having some special name, that Brooks or something, isn't it? B-U-S-C-H, bus you can remember, but it's a bush, bush scissors. Okay, if you want you can remember this. Scissors spelling, what is scissors spelling? I feel I got it wrong. S-C-I-S-S-O-R, okay. So you should remember this guys, B-U-S-C-H, S-C-I-S-S-O-R is scissors. Now let's go back to what where we were, we were at the definition. So come, can you say the definition guys? Let's try together, see it. It is a planned incision on the perineum and the posterior vaginal wall. See here you can see from the, uh, the posterior vaginal wall they are tearing and also what guys? The perineum. Okay, it's an incision on the perineum. That's why it's called as perineotomy and the posterior vaginal wall during the second stage of labor. When are you doing it? Second stage of labor just before the baby is delivered, isn't it? And it is, uh, it is a second degree injury. Okay. This is the most common obstetric operation. Okay. Now let us see the objectives. What are you trying to achieve by this? To enlarge the vaginal introitus as, uh, so as to facilitate easy and safe delivery of the fetus. So you are concerned more about this fetus. Easy and safe delivery of the fetus. Okay. So either you can uh, spontaneously the fetus will come out or manipulative. You can use some instruments also. Also, for the mother, how is it benefit, benefiting? It is minimizing the overstretching and rupture of the perineal muscles and fascia to reduce the stress and strain of the fetal head. Okay. Looks like this is again talking about the fetus. To reduce the stress and strain on the fetus head. So, this is also baby-wise. So, baby-wise means we'll put a pink. Okay. Easy and safe delivery of the fetus also pink. Then, where is the mother coming in? Mother seems to be coming him in here. Minimize the overstretching and rupture of the perineal muscles and fascia. You don't want to rupture her muscles and fascia. So this is the mother. So we put that in green. Okay. That's it. 
So you want to, what is your objective? To enlarge the vaginal introitus. Now what do you mean by introitus? What is, what do you mean by introitus guys? Introitus means it is an entrance or opening. So you want to enlarge the opening okay, of the vagina. So we are done with the definition and uh, the objectives of episiotomy. This is an important question for you in obstetrics, so pay attention here. Now we are moving on to the indications of episiotomy. You should not do it as routine. There are certain indications, guys. So if you are actually effectively managing your second stage of labor, you do not need to do an episiotomy. But here, the indications of episiotomy are a rigid perineum, like in an elderly primi gravida. See, it's not just elderly gravida. It is a elderly primi gravida. She is getting pregnant for the first time. Okay? When she is elderly. Elderly in obstetrics means what? 35 plus? Okay? But I am wondering if rigidity will be there at such a young age. Uh, I doubt it. Okay? But anyways, just remember this rigid perineum can cause arrest of the labor or delay in the descent of the presenting part. Okay? So you don't want it to be delayed etc. So you will give a episiotomy in elderly primi gravida. Then uh, it can be an indication. Then anticipating perineal tear. Now, perineal tear, you will expect uh, this perineal tear to happen when? If it is a big baby or if the shoulder gets stuck, shoulder dystocia or if there is a breech delivery, uh, okay, breech delivery or uh, there is a face to pubis delivery. Face of who? Face of the baby to the pubis of the mother, isn't it? Face to pubis delivery if it is there. How will face to pubis delivery be? This looks like a face presentation to me, but but anyways, look at this, the, the face in fact, here they are showing the mentum. Mentum is going toward the pubic symphysis, is it? Okay. So basically, if there is a phase to pubis delivery, <coughs> they prefer, uh, they, what was I telling you? Basically here, what they are saying is, the, the baby actually extends its head or something to get, get its head delivered. But here, there is some other mechanism of labor. Let's look at that uh, in detail, okay? <clears throat> so, if there's a big baby or there's a face to pubis delivery or a breech delivery or a shoulder dystocia, okay? Shoulder dystocia, how do you define shoulder dystocia? Look at this photo. Basically, after the delivery of the head, the baby's anterior shoulder is kind of, uh, uh, what, what do you see? It's impacted, okay, on the maternal pubic symphysis. So, in this condition, you will, you can, uh, episiotomy is an indication. But at this place, what I am thinking, the baby's face is, uh, head is out, they are saying. That means episiotomy should be done before the baby's head is out, isn't it? Anyways, let's see. Then, operative delivery, forceps delivery, ventous delivery. Ventous means what? Vacuum, isn't it? Ventous is nothing but vacuum. So, if you want to use some instruments, right? Then, Previous perineal surgery, if she has had some surgery done there, like pelvic floor repair or perineal reconstructive surgery. So, you have, imagine this, you have done a reconstruction surgery there. Do you want to put so much pressure there and, and stretch it and overstretch it? Like here you said that overstretching and rupture of the muscles, perineal muscles and fascia, you want to minimize. So, basically, if these people have had some pelvic floor repair or perineal reconstructive surgery, you definitely do not want to uh, overstretch it, right? So, what are the indications of episiotomy? Can you say the indications of episiotomy now? Come on, come on, you can do it. Episiotomy, I will do if there's a big baby, okay? Shoulder dystocia, very good. Face to pubis presentation, very good. Or, uh, one more thing we saw. Mm, something to do with the fetus. You're anticipating a perineal tear. What was it? Breach, breach delivery, okay. And if it is an elderly primary gravida and uh, basically if there is a previous uh, peri uh, perineal surgery, operative delivery, you want to use some instruments or in all these cases, you can do an episiotomy, okay. Now, uh, what are the common indications? You know the indications, but in commonly in a uh, hospital, what are the indications? Threatened perineal injury in primary gravida, okay. They didn't talk about elderly here. Rigid perineum like an elderly maybe. Forceps, breach, occipito, posterior or face delivery. So, if the occiput is posterior, this is something we didn't uh, focus on. Occipito, uh, posterior or face delivery. This face de delivery we have covered. But can you tell the common indications for episiotomy? Come on. Um, a perineal injury you are expecting or uh, elderly uh, or a rigid perineum. Let's not say elderly at all. Why say elderly? Rigid perineum if it is there or if uh, you are expecting the baby to have some... Uh, uh, occipital posterior or face delivery or forceps you want to use or breech delivery. You know, 
a rigid perineum is better than seeing an elderly primary gravida. I am removing this. <coughs> rigid perineum. In elastic perineum, why did they say elastic perineum? Is elastic same as rigid? Oh, it is inelastic. Okay, okay. Inelastic or rigid perineum. Okay. Guys, now we are done with the indications of episiotomy. Now we have to continue with timing of episiotomy. Types of episiotomy, that is mediolateral, median, uh, lateral, J-shaped. The differences between median and mediolateral, lateral. Then we have to look at the steps of mediolateral episiotomy because this is more commonly done, is it? The mediolateral one. <coughs> episiotomy, you have to know how to do it. Uh, you have to give some antiseptic and then what local anesthesia. All that you will have to see the steps and then the incision, how you will do, what layers are cut, etc. This is also indicating those layers. And this is the steps of repair. We will have to look at this. After that, you have what post-operative care you will suggest and complications of episiotomy. This much we have to look at. We will continue in the next video, guys. What do you say? Huh? That is better. Bye-bye.